And the first question would be, what is your name? Jim C. Reef. Jim C. Reef. And Jim, what's your date of birth? 12 And where were you born? Okay, and uh, I just want to be sure that you know that we're going to use this video as part of the Oral History Project at Prairie Grove and that we have your permission. Yep. Okay, Jim, tell me, who were your parents? Uh, my name is Alfred Reef. Reef. And uh, did you have any siblings? No. Um, t tell me about your family when you were growing up. What were some of the things y'all did? My grandmothers, uh, one lived in town, one lived out, go to what's called Zimmerman Church. I'm sorry. Zimmerman. What? Zimmerman Church. Zimmerman Church? Oh, yeah. So you lived in town the whole time? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Same house. Same house. In the Delford's old house, yeah. that when I met, where I talked to him. Um, so tell me about your family business. Uh, basically, he was in the bank. When did Delford go to work for the bank? Or I think 1929. 1929. What What did he do in 1929 for the bank? Uh, a bit of everything, but a little fire in the morning, a little fire at night. Swept during the day. Sw swept during the day? What? Huh? Swept out during the uh, day. So he did a little bit of everything at the bank and went to uh, work in the late 20s? I think it was uh, What was the name of the bank back then? It was the Farmers and Merchants Bank, Kim. It was? It, it was. There was two banks of Murray's together. Um, I think of the First National Bank in the Farmer's Home State. How did, uh, how did Delford become uh, the owner of the bank? Oh, yeah, he bought a little stock. Uh, you know, he didn't own all of it. He didn't own about half of it. <coughs> So you couldn't make a living farming? He couldn't. He couldn't? I didn't have a um, So when did you get involved with working at the bank? I was working in 1961. How old were you in 1961? 21. 21. Had you been, had you been to college already? Yes. Where'd you go to the college? Arkansas. University of Arkansas. Well, before we get into you working at the bank, tell me what it was like growing up as a kid in Prairie Grove. What did you do as a kid? Oh, I'm sorry. Um. Say that again. Play outside. Used to go down to my grandmother's, grandmother's. It was the first house south of was on the Carl House. What was your grandmother's name? Alfie Abbotson. And. Um, Tell me about what it was like to go to school in Prairie Grove. Oh, pretty good. Because it was small. Well, I don't know how many kids were in the class. But it was not many. I mean, it was a dozen or something. I don't know. Tell him, tell him how you got Lassie. Tell him how you got Lassie. Well, I was somewhere with my mother and dad, and guy had a bunch of pups. He said, I was born in his daughter. Yeah, but I said, mother and dad don't care. I, uh, there was some in the car, I asked my man. 
So what were some of the things, what were some of your chores at home when you were growing up as a kid? What were some of the things you did around the house? I don't really remember Scott. You don't remember? Who were some of your friends that you would have visited with and known when you were a kid? People my age? Larry Bell, Tom McCoy, Bill Harmon. I, I, I was in a Cub Scout troop, but they were all in. HBA was in. Uh, I think they had a teammate was. I don't know who anybody else was not. Who was your scoutmaster? Well, I don't know, I was a boy scout, and Clyde E. Lapp was a, you know, scoutmaster. Okay. Um. <clears throat> man, man, most places. Man, most places. Patience. He had much patience. Yeah. Uh, he needed them. Uh, what about in high school? Who were your, some of your teachers that you remember? Oh, the Weaver. Oh, my health and geometry. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Thompson. Uh, what was, Dales. I'm sorry, who? Dales. Oh, need him to sit up? No, back up a little bit. Oh, sorry. Yeah. <coughs> sorry. You're good. Okay. Okay. Um, tell me about what you remember as a kid, Prairie Grove. What was it like? What was the town like? I probably got where I grew up in the town. I was pretty bad. I mean, I was somebody who was old, probably. One long main street, uh, so I was 62, and I was on the road to the town that was paved. When did they pave Highway 62? Well, I, I don't know. Uh, it was paved to my earliest memory. It was paved? When... But the rest of the streets were not. I remember they paved Bush Street west from down uh, past my house. And I had a blue bicycle and I fell on the car. Where did y'all go to church? You said Zinneman? I went to my grandfather, my young grandmother. Where did you go to church? Methodist Church. Methodist Church? Um. Who was the preacher when you, do you remember as a kid? You don't remember? Um, how often would people come to town in those days? People that lived out in the country. Oh, well, I became once a week, usually on Saturday. Uh, some came more often, I'm sure. You said what the cause is. Trades day. What kind of day? Trades day. Trades day. Was the bank open on Saturday? Yes. I was on the corner of Bush and not Bush, but Mark and U.S. 62. This was on the corner. Where it is now? Yeah. On the very corner of the main door. Oh, the main door is there? What, um, what was trade days like? Would you have big crowds of people coming into uh, town? Yeah. Oh, you both I could give out tickets with purses. You bought something, you got a ticket. Maybe two or three tickets. And half a song, give money on or something else away. Did 
did ever did some people drive ride horses to town in those days or did everybody drive or what was it like oh I'm sure people won't ride horses but I don't know most of them drove I guess most of them drove um Tell me what it was like working at the bank. You worked at the bank for a long time, right? From age 21 until, until what year? I worked until 31 years. 31 years? And three years after Harvest Bar, I worked for them. So what was it like running the, or working first for your dad and then later running the bank? Oh. The job. So it was a little hard to please sometimes. He was a good biker. People liked him. Most people did, at least. Did you get to know a lot of, tell me about how you got to know a lot of people. Didn't you get to know a lot of people working at the bank? Oh yeah, I mean, my mother was a high school English teacher. I used to have people come in and tell me how good a teacher, teacher she was. I used to have people come in. I mean, I got a bike to the other. Yeah, well, I was. I, uh, I, uh, it was, uh, well, it was, uh, it was uh, a big model in 1954. Oh. Uh, five or six or seven employees there at the bank? I think so. Uh, when did y'all start serving popcorn on at the bank? Used to, they served it on Fridays. Is that something y'all did? Uh, I, yeah, I, I don't know that when we started. Was that a long tradition at the bank? Oh, so yeah. So long, I think. Right. Um, can you think of any funny stories or anything you can remember about working there that would be interesting to tell? Uh, I remember one that my dad tells. He robbed the, robbed the Farmers of Mercy Bank. I prefer to say that thing. 32, maybe. I'm not sure that's right. What happened? But it was April Fool's Day. Yeah, they it. really did rob it? Yeah, yeah. they really did. Yeah. How much money did they get? I don't have no idea. Uh, but somebody in the amount of vault, get in, I, I don't know who that was. They were locked up in the vault. Uh, somebody came along and get in, got them out. Several days later, they caught part of them. And since there's a guy in there, that had been in the robbery. He walked in and the devil said, what the hell are you doing in here? And the guy said, I've never been here before. And he said, you damn sure I have been. So the robber came back? Yeah, the police, the police sent him in. The police sent the robber in yeah. for D.E. to identify. And D.E. by golly identified him. Did it, so he ended up going to prison? I guess. Did you get, ever get the money back? Oh, you don't I have know. no idea. Was that the only time the bank was ever robbed? Oh, uh, I don't know. Well, the one in Farmington was robbed. Yeah, that one was. Branch Bank. Why? Now, you had banks in Probably Farmington in, and in, West Fork, right? No. I was put the one in West Fork. Okay, so you just had the bank there in Farmington? When did you guys open the bank in Farmington? Oh, seventies, I guess. Seventies, maybe. 
Oh, boy. And what year did you sell the bank to Arvest? 1992. 92. Um, tell me uh, anything else you can think about the bank you well, want to tell me? Yeah, the bank was worth one week. That was all farmers and merchants, wasn't it? Or was that Arvest? It was Arvest. Arvest. Oh, okay. After I'm the sorry. merger, they after they buy out, they bought them, moved the other banks. Uh, tell me about your mother. You said she taught school, uh, high school? Oh, she was English. For how many years did she teach? Oh, little Scott. Most of her life, though? Oh, yeah, most of her life. Oh, till you were born. Yeah, until so I was born. Oh. This is one time they talked to her about it. Coming back and see some more, and I said, "Let Bobby in." I said, "No, if you just wait till I get it." That was Bobby that did you in. I didn't want to go school. You didn't want her teaching while you were there. No. Very big deal. She was this way. Who are some of the customers of the bank you remember? Some of the store owners downtown. I know there are a lot of merchants in those old days that in downtown. And uh, who were some of the ones you remember that you knew real well? Oh, I was feeling all on Mary Parks, Tim Parks, and stuff on Um That's the battle of Sterling. We were in the late Commodore store. Which reminds me, I've got a, a, a couple of pictures that I've shared with you. Do you have one? I mean, there's an the office. What about Howard Fiddler? He was right across the street from you guys, wasn't he? Oh, uh, he was west. Florence uh, Hill. Across the street. Florence Hill. Oh, he was? No. Florence Hill, he remembers, across the street. Oh, uh, she had a good store. Um, part of the store, a uh, hardware store. Uh, some drivers, all kinds of stuff. I, I worked there one time uh, in 1954 or something. I go came out. <clears throat> where do you work? Where did you work to sack groceries? Southern grocery. Southern Southern yeah. Mercantile. Uh -huh. Which is right across the street from the bank. How much money did you make? Four dollars a day. Four dollars a day. Yeah. So was that when you were in high school? Yeah. How long did you work there? Think. Oh my year. Probably over a year. I think it was nineteen fifty four. What all did you sell in this what all did they have there at the store? Pretty much well, all the goes to the store were probably similar to you know, produce and meat and a bunch of shopping in. Oh. Can we stop for this man? Can we stop for this man? Yeah, oh, sure. Go ahead and stop. He's shopping at the grocery uh, service station and the house. And the next place was the eat shop. I was a little western hamburger place. The hamburgers in town, people buy it still. You know, the guy posts for a hamburger, it was good as one of the eats. Who we're, ran this, the, the restaurant? Rube Epperson. Say it again. Rube Epperson. Rube Epperson? Percy uh, Epperson. The next building down was the South Wilson Electric Building. Mark Link. 
Oh, for God, I had a little bush of shop. And I'm not sure the next building was H. Dixon, sorry, but it might have been. Was what? H. Dixon, sorry, off him. Okay. Also, uh, uh, there was a store, a post store, a lot of money. Which store is this? Probably a drug store. Drug store? Which, which drugstore? Oh, no. Do you remember the Mobley Cave House? Uh, vaguely. I saw that. Do you remember the old Prairie Grove Jail? Yep, still there. There's a whole lot of camp. So did people get in trouble or get arrested for being drunk or fighting or something? Would they put them in? Sometimes. Do you remember this building? Or was this before your time? before my time. On the south side of the street, so the station, strikes in the middle of April May County. Do what now? Walk out of April May. Strikes in the middle of April May. Was that Cunningham's store? Oh, uh, not yeah. where I heard it. Oh, okay. Uh, River Theater. Beverly Theater? Where was it located? Oh, part of what? No, there's a little Zay Lee shop. Uh, Jack was on me there. Look for some of Jack and Kenny. Right across, kind of from the phone company? No, on the east end of Main Street. On the east end of Main Street. Oh, okay, east end of Main Street. On the south side? Yes. Kind of part of Daisy's knowledge, maybe. Oh, okay. Um, Carson was there, Sterling, Neil Dragons. Neil Dragons. What were the businesses that a lot of people would go to back in the 50s and 60s? Where did everybody go to shop and to visit? Carson, I guess. Crescents? Who ran the Crescents? Oh, yeah, Skelton. Sky. Skelton. Skelton. And then later Bill Ramsey? Yeah. Oh, Bill Ramsey. Drugstore was social too, wasn't it? Yeah, they sold Cokes. They both had Crescents. Did they both have fountains or just yes. Carmen? Okay. Well, what did you do when you were a kid growing up for fun, besides going outside and playing? What would you and your friends do for fun? Baseball. Pick up games. Sometimes play football. You tell them about saving Larry's life. What did you do? Larry Bell? Yeah. Bell and I did this, but I, uh, we were playing on a, we a face pond, and Larry fell in. I wasn't big enough to pull him out, but I grabbed him with the legs and held on. Which meant his head was underwater. 
Well, it says, oh, damn, they were drowned him. <laughs> but, uh, actually, Barry Rose and Leon Bay were outside the house, and a lot of them, they came in and came out. So he fell in and you helped pull him out? Well, I held on to him. <laughs> you held on to him till they pulled him out? <laughs> How old were you then? I don't have any idea. I don't think he actually started school. Oh, so you were real young? Yeah. Where was the pond? Oh, uh, I was going over Mollick and Bush Street. Oh, everybody's mother. No, it wasn't in your yard. I no. It was, oh, it was yeah. up in Beatty's. Well, what did adults do for fun back in the day? I, I know they didn't. I had no idea. I mean, I just played cards. And when you moved back to, or when you came back from college and were working at the bank, uh, what year was that? This one. What did uh, young adults do for fun back then? Because they didn't drive to Fayetteville for fun much, probably. What did y'all do for fun there? Would you visit with friends or what would you we think? We had parties. Yeah, parties in the house. And we did go to, the, we did. to the movie. That was a big deal? That's what you, it was the only movie. <laughs> the Ozark Theater? Uh -huh. You go to the old Ozark Theater? Uh, when did you buy the farm out there west of town and move out uh, there? I pulled into my dad and he fixed that house up a little bit. We moved in over to two story farmhouse. So when you moved back, that's where you lived? Yeah. So you lived there, what, up until the 90s sometime? Uh, on that farm? No, we lived there till 2005. 2005, so you were there for... We didn't live in the same house, we built one behind. Right, yeah. but you first lived in the one house and then built the second mm -hmm. house. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But we lived on the farm. So you also farmed when you came back? Uh, I wasn't a farmer. You didn't do it? Uh, uh, More than uh, you wanted. <laughs> no, but I was cattle. I was very careful him. Well, do you have any good stories you could tell on your dad? Because he's not here to tell them. And he was a gr your father was well known as a big storyteller. Oh, I need to give us a story. Do you have any stories you could tell on Delford? I'd have to think about that a little bit. He likes to hear that quail, huh? You tell a bird dog to pull the streets for pigs, and my mother would all be down the street. I'm baby buggy, my bird dog would be out of the street. He'd save the wing me on traffic. And He'd start, stop the traffic? No, he stop it. he just stay between me and... Oh, between you and the cars? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, the bird dog would keep you out uh -huh. of the traffic? Uh-huh. He had, uh, you could tell about you and Greg and the preacher going bird hunting with Delford Stone. Oh, we met three of us, Greg Reed, Tim and I. Oh, uh, in a Christmas quail hunt. Two years in a row, we lost the Delford's bird dogs. <laughs> what did Delford think about you losing his bird dogs? Well, that would be like the bird dogs. <laughs> did you ever find them? Yeah. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> they just run off during the hunt? I uh, guess so. Well, off all we eating a lot. Did you like going hunting? Was that something you liked to do? Yeah. What else did you do for fun, Jim? I started to play baseball when I was pretty good at it. Played baseball? Uh, a guy named Buddy Garvin, I was a coach. And he used to take a swimming after the practice. Where? Do, uh, there were two places to go. 
Once I was sitting on the highway on the east side of the office bridge. One time was a whole water swimming. And the other time, you go out west for you. That's what it was called the daylight bubble. And it was really deep in spread out. Because uh, those of us too, the local swimming holes, they wouldn't be much today, but they were probably wouldn't like your kids swimming on that. Now where were they again? Four of them was out on the highway. West of town. West, west of town was on oh, Stonewall Road. Uh, what road? Stonewall. Stonewall, Stonewall. okay. Uh, and an iron bridge over it. That one looks a whole lot like this today. Did you ever swim out at the, at the Illinois River? Or oh, the yeah. Mayfort? Not, not the Mayfort, but... The Illinois River. Not the Illinois River. It was one of the places the coach took them, yeah. right? Yeah. You used to play with all the and things that was in. It was 12 or 14, I was a kid. How many Is it amazing to you? What about the growth of the city? It seems like it's gone from a nice small little town to now it's got a lot more people living in it. Does that surprise you? No, really. I'm a little bit surprised it hasn't gone faster than it has. I mean, it's got 4,500 population now. And I think the time. Like that, I was going up, or maybe less than that. Uh, I was thinking one of these days is going to go some more. What are some stories that I haven't thought about to ask that you want to add to your, uh, that you want to tell? Oh. Oh. about a hunting trip that wasn't in Prairie Grove, but it was with Prairie Grove people. Where'd you go? To Wyoming. Oh, well, yeah, I was, I was, I was, I was friends. You could tell him who went. Who'd you, who'd you go with? I didn't know who you'd be on. Looks like W.C. Brooks, Cal Bain, Delford. Clyde. Clyde, did you yeah, say Clyde? Clyde. Oh, sorry. Mm -hmm. So where did y'all go? Oh, uh, Douglas, Wyoming. Uh, <coughs> to, <Pretty true. coughs> um, oh. Yeah, man. I was down there. I was in North Central, North Central Wyoming. I was very close to Yellowstone, Montana. And For years, I was there at home. One time, that I mean, it was the same group of people more up. It was the last year they went down there. After that, I hope they never see it. I was in Washington did, County. Who did the cooking and stuff while you were on the hunting trip? Uh, there were people. So like Doc and Payne and Dr. Brooks, the most of it. If you could just tell one story that reminds you of Prairie Grove, that some of the good things about the city, what would and the people? What would be your story you could tell? Oh, I remember the day they took the water tower down. Uh, if you get the old water tower, sit up on the south side of the street by go on the business, and the side of you don't it down. And on Sunday morning, it was church time. 
and pull out his long thumb, and he looks at the one that has a rubber action, strikes with his thumb, pull out the thing, and he said, I only think about taking that water down to the tree, fall over here on the starting crescent. And he says, Jackie, what fell? Did you know that? Did you know that when they took the water tower down that it fell on the stores? No, I didn't. Well, so there's actually a whole series of pictures. Yeah. I've got one that shows that water tower. It's just about to What year yeah. was it? I don't know. Ramsey was running it. Bill Ramsey. Mm -hmm. And then John Everett called the <laughs> insurance company the next day and told him he was John Everett from Prairie Grove. And he said, "Well, I know Prairie Grove. We have a uh, water tower insured there or something." And John said, "Yeah, I know." That's why I'm calling you. That's why I'm calling you. Yeah. It was on the south side, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah behind the crest of the Sterling. Okay, I remember where it was, but I don't remember it falling. It did. Larry Jones has pictures of it. Just so they were going to take it down and it just fell on them, huh? Well, yeah. Who who did you say said it, if it was somebody? Did somebody say it was going to fall? It was going to fall on the store. It was Lawrence Phillips, I think. Who? Lawrence Phillips. Lawrence, Lawrence Phillips said, said it was going to fall. Well, and he, we were standing watching him, and oh. he evidently cuts trees, and he knew that they <laughs> he were knew doing it wrong. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, it was an interesting day. The <laughs> power went out in all the churches. and <laughs> it was a fun place to grow up. Uh, I was friends that I grew up with, still live there. Got my age, about my age. Some of them would be good interviews. Uh, Larry Bell was one. Uh, Sam Sowery. Uh, uh, G. Hamilton. Uh, Jack Clark. I think I went to my school well. Larry Bell, Charles Stills. A lot of the people we've talked to have said that Prairie Grove is a real friendly town and there's good people there. Do you agree with that? Yeah, I do. I mean, I don't know if they're any friendly or any better than they are in Palmer or Lincoln, but they are good people. Good friends. People that I've been friends with for almost in the first grade of. Wow. So it's the kind of town that you have a friend in the first grade and they'll be a friend for life? Pretty much. Well, I think a lot of Prairie Grove people have stayed in this area, if not in Prairie Grove. Uh, years and years ago, uh, some of my club friends wanted to know why I was being back to Prairie Grove. Well, it was two days. One, I had a job. <laughs> two, all my friends were there. I mean, a lot of my friends. Guys that I grew up with. Most of them live around there. Few people. So, so you stayed, you came back because you had a job and your friends were there. That makes well. sense. Yeah. One of the things early on in our married life, it's Terry and Austin and Hamilton were all, were they all three in the air guard? No. They were activated in Fort Smith. The Cuban Missile Crisis. Cuban Missile. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And every night we'd go to the courts, all of us, and sit and have coffee or something. Sit there and visit? And, uh -huh. Uh huh. Well, I know they still do that. That's one the other thing I wanted to ask you about is in Prairie Grove now, Back in those days, they went to the court. Now everybody in the morning always goes to the one stop. Mm -hmm. How long has that tradition been when people just all gathered down there to visit? I have no idea. I knew to go. You didn't? No, he's not a morning person. You're not? Mm -hmm. I used to go to, I 
I was at Larry Crawley's. Larry Crawley's, that's the other place they yeah. said. I was down there and they said, if you want to know what's going on, it's that one stop or over at Larry Crawley's. And usually when I go in Larry's, there's several yeah. guys sitting around visiting. So you'd go over, that was just across the street from the bank. So. They used to go to the bank. They used to go to the bank. They used to go to the bank. They used to go to the there's well 15 people that were warm. Well, the bank came up with the water. 